This is a set of friends with AF3 highlights from season six, round three at Puebla at the Autodromo Miguel E. Arbed. Jens Betzmer came into this race with a eight point advantage. Today, using the international short course, a 2.9 kilometer, 1.8 mile oval track with 16 turns, with multiple opportunities for overtaking around the flowing layout. Here are the results from qualifying. Nemanja Popovic started on pole position with Blank alongside on the front row. Some shocks through the field included Vivol starting P5 for Newt Newt Racing, Bartos Kopeta starting P13, and Ali Yardimja starting alongside on the seventh row in P14. Here come the highlights from race one. Popovic got away well from the start, with Blank pulling him behind about two car lengths back. But behind those two, cars struggled to make it through the 90 left of turn one without gaining some form of damage. Upwards of 10 cars were involved in the first crash, which brought out the virtual safety car for the very first time. Overheads show multiple cars involving Roshek, Fern, Corpetta, Miata and Coffee, all involved in this crash, including Costa, who ended up being ping-ponged around towards turn two. But the collisions didn't stop even after the VSC was deployed. As a dark thunder, River Racing and Newt Newt cars were all involved in incidents coming into the turn four hairpin. On to lap two, where riding on board with Vibles, we see Jack, Olivier and Epoli colliding at turn 11. They dropped out of the podium places. On lap six, Domingo made a textbook pass on Miguel Costa coming into turn nine. Costa would remain behind him for a little while longer. On lap seven, Miles Rag missed his braking zone coming into turn one, ended up colliding with Little Miata. Miata recovered well, but Rag ended up having to collide with Adam Roshek as he rejoined. He ended up facing backwards and was forced to wait to find a clear space. On to lap nine, Yarmja misjudges the inside of the corner and takes out Bertrand while others crash in front of him, for example, Costa and Fern. Lap 10 saw the upper midfield fight get incredibly heated between the two Polaris drivers, Ali Yarmja and Diego Domingo. Yarmja made a textbook pass into turn one despite going deep and kept the position. Yarmja's push for the podium places would continue though, as he overtook multiple cars who had gone off track or off line. This was all despite significant pressure from drivers behind. The battle for the lead meanwhile on lap 11 saw an old favourite take the lead for the first time since season 3, with a well-planned final corner to overtake Nemanja Popovic for the lead. Ben's last race before last week was season four round one in Okayama earlier this year. Yardimja's drama would continue coming all the way to the last lap and the last corner as he misjudges and crashes while dueling with Jack Olivier to the line. He lost two positions, falling to P6 and almost destroyed three other cars while spinning out. It could have been worse for him though, as more cars had reached the line just as he did. Ben Hayes took his first win since his championship win in season three. He would start P15 with the reverse grid with Miles Rag starting on pole for race two. Rag got away cleanly towards turn one, but again, behind would not be so clean. Multiple cars and multiple braking errors would cause a large pileup involving a plurality of the field. Initial contact was caused by Blank and Cano who were trying to overtake for a podium position down the inside into turn one. Once again, the plus five racing car of Miguel Costa was among the worst affected, as you can see at the foreground. He also got caught up with one of the Polaris cars. This brought out the virtual safety car as expected. The field behind the two STE drivers had to scramble to try and avoid the mess, mostly with little success. Wessel Verhalden took an adventurous line across the grass to cut turn one and two and rejoin in P2. He would later be penalised heavily for this incident. Jack Olivier start saw him skewered in his door and lifted off track at turn two. He would hit the barriers and rejoin further down the field. 
Yarum Jewett sees an opportunity to find a gap into turn one to go deep. He would hit Pingu Quinn, but find a way through the mess to rejoin in P2. He would then almost be taken out by the rejoining for Halden. For Halden's on board, tells a clearer picture. While trying to avoid a lot of the mess, he ended up having to take an as the crow flies line across turn one and two, rejoining right in front of Yarnamja. He avoided Yarnamja, but would then hit Little Miata into the turn four hairpin. Lap two saw Ali Yarnamja try and make a pass around the outside for the lead into turn one. He would not succeed in this, and he would almost lose P2 in the process to Vessel for Halden, who would see an opportunity into Turn 4. Lap 2 would also see Ben Hayes making gains through the field after the reverse grid passing Popovich, and then a stock brood car. Popovich nearly lost it, colliding with said stock brood car, and then Hayes would also pass Coffee into the following corner. That's two cars in two corners. That would move Ben up into P6 after only lap two. Another VSC and another VSC restart saw Jack Olivier make a textbook pass on two cars into turn one off of the restart. The onboard would show him close up to the field and then make his move immediately on the STE car. The STE car would then collide with another car, allowing Jack to make a second position coming into the corner. The flying Brazilian Teles on his return to AF Leagues missed his brakes coming into turn one and wiped out Diego Domingo. Diego would recover only to lose one position. Diego would bounce back quickly with a move into the final two corners on Mosquito. Lap 4 would see Fern attempt to pass Coffee into a right-hander, only to find Coffee would not take the corner as wide as he was expecting. He almost rejoined in the middle of the corner and almost took out more cars. The action continued at the rear of the field as well, as Cano and Mosquito came together, coming towards Turn 4. A simple tap rear to front caused both of them to have to take different lines through the hairpin than expected. Lap 6 saw Ben Hayes become a spectator in the battle for P2 between Ali Yadamja and Jack Olivier in Polaris and Stockbrood. The hope for Ben Hayes was to try and find some clean air to try and chase down Miles Rag for the victory. Miles had already opened up a five second gap to the cars behind, being able to avoid most of the mess, unlike last week. Ben Hayes, meanwhile, couldn't find any one of the opportunities on this track suiting to him until Ali Yandra made a mistake coming into turn nine. Diego Domingo needed a change of underwear coming into turn 11 as he spun on his own while checking up with other cars for a collision. He was stuck on the inside of the corner. There were no holds barred between these two drivers, Adam Roshek and Coffey, as they duted out for the midfield positions. These two drivers literally defined touring car moves with dive bombs and door banging at turn four.
Lap 10 saw Roshek spinning after collisions from the front and behind going into Turn 7. There were more battles at the back of the grid as the two STE drivers of Cano and Blank were in a heated battle. But it got even more heated as G750 rejoined in front of them. Blank would take a dive to the outside with Cano being forced to stay behind. With his last win in AF3 being in season four early this year, Miles Rag cruised to victory for River Racing, taking their first victory of the season. The win was a long time coming after the cruelest loss at Brands Hatch the previous week. Olivier would finish P2 and Ben Hayes would come home P3 after a 12th place gain in race two. The two races at Puebla mean that Jack Olivier takes the lead of the Drivers' Championship with Betzma dropping to P3 after taking a drop race this week. Domingo remains in the hunt despite a difficult event. Stockbrood maintain a solid lead in the teams, while Great Britain keep a lead in the nations that they have won every season since Season 4. Next week sees the drivers go to Denmark and Jurlandsringen. This is Assetto Friends, and see you on the start grid.